Hello and welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to be talking about the absolute septic tank fire that is Unity right now. But before I go into a preamble on the subject, you're probably wondering what the R word mentioned in the title is. And I'll give you a chance to guess what the word is. Using the fact that this is in a legal context as well as the video thumbnail as a hint, and as an additional hint, the following two letters are E and T. There's a term sometimes used online called enshittification, where a company has a product that is selling well and people enjoy, and therefore everyone's happy. People can have fun with the product and the company makes money. Then the company gets a little bit more greedy and starts making changes that are worse for the customer. And then they get so greedy, they make changes that outright sabotage the company itself. Unity has effectively speed ran the incidification process by making changes, changes to their terms of service with how developers are going to have to pay them for use of their engine. The long story short, Unity wanted to count every install as something that the devs would have to pay for. Not every purchase of the game, but every time the game is installed on someone's device, including reinstallations or pirated copies. They went back on this after a huge shitstorm erupted, and there is problems with how they'll handle this backtracking, but I'll get to that later. Now, everyone and their mother is talking about this. It is, after all, the latest shitstorm in an industry where no one seems to learn anything ever at all. So, I might not have too much unique to say about it, but there is one thing that I really want to stress because this might actually be the most important part of this discussion. And that is where the word comes in, retroactively. Retroactively is a very dangerous word legally. It means that your ass is on the line, and if you don't look at the stars and glean what tomorrow will bring, or ask your local prophet if you should do something, that's on you. It's something that holds you accountable for something that you could not possibly make an informed decision about legally. To illustrate this fact, for a while it was legal to drive or travel as the sovereign citizens like to say, without a seatbelt. It was an option, a very good safety option, but you could drive without it. However, eventually more and more data came in about the direct correlation between lives not lost and lives using a seatbelt when driving, as well as the fact that not only does it protect a driver, it protects everyone else from having a body flung through the windshield. Politicians passed a law saying that you have to drive with a seatbelt. And the way it works is that from this point on, it's no longer a choice to make, you have to do it. But if they said this law applies retroactively, then almost everyone who drove without a seatbelt, who maybe drove in a car that didn't even have one, the state now has a sword of Damocles hanging over their head that it can cut at any moment. Laws are almost never retroactive. It almost always is from now on, with even a bit of a grace period for transition, especially for things like, say, safety regulations and whatnot. And this also applies to terms of service. If you're using a service or product that has certain uh, financial systems in place where you have to pay if you do X or make X or whatever, almost always it's a case that from now on, this is going to apply. This means that if you don't like the change, if you don't agree with it, you can stop using the service. 
Hell, Unity had a clause in place that says, if you don't like the service for a latest version of Unity, you can stick to using an older version of Unity and not be beholden to that terms of service change. But they got rid of that. But now that Unity wants these changes to be retroactive for these financial obligations to also apply to an ignorant past version of these developers, unless these developers have access to a time machine, they're kind of fucked. The system used to be pretty darn simple. If you make X amount of money or X amount of sales from your game, you owe Unity a specific amount. It not only allowed you to factor in Unity's cut into your potential budget, but also meant that if a game just wasn't a winner, it wasn't a good seller, the developer isn't punished for that. Just try again, this one's on us. So now, rather than just keeping track of sales, something that's very easy for developers to do, they have to keep track of installations itself, something they may not be able to do, especially across multiple different storefronts. So like, is this like the US tax laws where if you underrepresent the numbers, you might be in trouble? Are developers supposed to trust what Unity says the installation numbers are? Can developers even trust numbers given by a company like Unity that's willing to enact drastic developer harming terms of service changes and say that applies before we even announce this as well? Unity initially wanted all installations to apply to this, even pirated installations, and it comes a question of how they would even track that. Then they backpedaled and said installations, unique installations on a certain device, which still leaves a question of what if someone installs a game on a virtual machine and does that over and over and over and over again. First of all, I don't see how they would be able to actually change from all installations anywhere, anytime to installations for a very limited criteria. And Unity's response to this question is effectively, just trust me, bro. But with this comes a matter of privacy. Now customers have a reason to be adverse to Unity the Unity engine and not just game developers. And if game developers aren't able to foot the bill, well, that means someone else has to. And this thus brings in some small choice, humble mom and pop indie devs like Nintendo, Disney, Microsoft, Sony, Warner Brothers Discovery, Viacom, you know, those little guys. Yes, these companies have games that use the Unity engine. Disney has Marvel Snap. Warner Brothers Discovery has Looney Tunes World of Mayhem. Or they have storefronts where you can install Unity engine games from, like Microsoft's Game Pass. I don't think any of these companies are going to be too happy hearing you owe us X amount because we decided all of a sudden that you do. And there's no way for you to back out of this contract short of straight up deleting the games from your services. So now Unity has an interesting choice. Do they be selective with who they might go after for this? leaving the really big guys alone and only going after the medium and the small fish. Which would result in developers who can make medium but still financially successful games like Cuphead and RimWorld have even more reasons to abandon Unity due to the unfair practices and who they go after. Or do they go after these larger companies, in which case, good fucking luck going after something like Microsoft that was able to defeat, legally, both the US and UK for their Activision Blizzard and King purchase. A purchase that is far more legally gray 
then there's you owe us money because we all of the sudden decided you do kind of shit. Will this aid them in the short term? Sure, there's some games that are far too far in development to reasonably switch over engines. The sister Scrimblo fighter to the one you're seeing on screen here, Nick All-Stars Brawl 2, for example, is right around the corner and that is hosted on the Unity engine. And I'm I'm really, really fucking sorry for all of the people waiting for Hollow Knight Silk Song because that is on the Unity engine. So whether or not Viacom or Team Cherry are willing to kind of endure it and then switch over to a different engine the next time available, who knows. But there are also multitudes of games that are early in development or even just starting development that the developers have a chance of switching over to Unreal or Godot. And once that happens, it is very, very, very unlikely they will ever come back. Because even if Unity decides to completely walk back on this change, the cat's out of the bag, the can of worms is opened, Pandora's jar has been unsealed, and now we know this company is capable of making these decisions that are so short-sighted, greedy, predatory, and just disastrous that it's best not to trust the company anymore even if they do say they're super sorry with a cherry on top. It can take years to build up a solid reputation and minutes to destroy it. And what Unity has done ha is becoming effectively the legal and financial equivalent of a child fucker. And if other game companies react to this by making their engines free to download and use, and incorporate the same kind of financial plan Unity used to have, they'd be even more screwed, cause now the pool of competition just got larger. So congratulations Unity, you've managed to sacrifice long-term viability for a short-term gain. All because you wanted to have people retroactively on the line because you're a bunch of fucking retards. So yeah, those are my thoughts on this whole ordeal, including what I think is the most impactful part of this change. I hope you enjoyed the video, that I gave you something to think about and otherwise entertained you. Take care.